Boom! What's up everyone? In today's video I'll show you how to create mobile game UI buttons. Responsive buttons. Yep. Let's dive in directly. Let's let's go. So the very first thing will be creating these particular buttons. I was working in the game industry and I created lots of different game concepts, mobile game concepts, and also mobile applications for games. And today we'll be creating this button like this responsive one. What does it mean responsive? It means that no matter what we'll start typing there, the button will stretch horizontally and vertically. And we'll be we'll create this in Figma. Yep, today we'll be talking about some Figma Pro secrets that I'll reveal for you and you will be able to use and recreate this button for your games, for your mobile game UI. Okay? Let's dive in. First of all, a couple of things we need to know that we'll be using today the typeface banners. Banners is a free typeface, it's directly, it's already in your Figma. Just start typing in the typeface panel, banners, and you will see it there. The font size that I'll be using today will be 36. For your particular case, you can use whatever you want, but today for this video, for this tutorial, I'll be using 36. I'll be also using five colors, white for our text, then two colors, orange and yellow for our button, for the gradient, and also two colors, two brown colors for our shadows and strokes. Figma tools. Yep, that's exactly where all the magic is happening. Uh, in terms of Figma tools, we'll be using auto layout, constraints, gradients and styles. Now let's go to the step one. Step one, press T and start typing home. This will be the text of our button. Next thing that I'm going to do, I'm going to press shift A to convert this button into the outer layout. For this outer layout, I'll set the align center. Next thing I'll set constraint to center to type this uh, text from exactly from the middle, so it will go to left and right, not always just to the right. Uh, the next thing that I'm going to do, I'm going to change the fill color to linear gradient from top to bottom, and for the top one we'll be using orange, for the bottom one we'll be using yellow, then change the text color to white, add stroke, for the stroke use the um, brown color, then add effects, drop shadow, blur 0, Y position 2, and color brown. Done. Now you just created pretty simple auto layout, but that looks already cool. But how to make it even cooler? How to adapt it to mobile game UI component that will look really amazing with these wings from left and right side. How to create that? Let's take a look. Next thing that we're going to do, we are gonna take a look at the height of this button, which is 56, which means that we need to create the rectangle and the height of the rectangle is 56. The width, it doesn't matter in this case because we'll change it by doing some things. So we just created it. Next thing that I'm going to select auto layout, command option C, select our rectangle, command option V, and now we have fill color applied to our, in this case, right wing of the button. Next thing that I'm going to do, I'm going to go to the point mode. If you don't know all these things, if I'm too fast for you, I recommend you to take the Figma Pro Secrets course that I created for you. You can find the link in bio where I explain all the things step by step. Constraints separately, auto layouts separately, shadows separately, how to switch to the point mode separately. So you will learn everything step by step in an easy, simple way. So you will, you will master Figma, you will be like a pro in it. And once you learn that, go back to this tutorial or just follow me what, exactly what I'm doing if you already know what to do and follow me step by step to create this button. So 
Once we select it, we went to the point mode of this rectangle, move the right bottom, bottom right uh, point of this rectangle, move it to the left, then change the corner radius to something different. So we just need it to be rounded and the right side also to something different like this. I want to make it, I want to make this button look really, really cool. So that's why I'm going to add one additional thing. I want to add here, you know what? Yep. I'm going to add here additional point. I press command and press on this dot again. And now when I have handles, I can move it a little bit to the right. And now you see it has like the curve there. It's not perfect uh, in terms of the points. I don't want to waste your time uh, for, for a perfect walk. What I would do, I would switch to fully uh, shape mode, command shift O for this particular element. So then I would play with this, all these dots to make them really rounded like here. But while we're here already, let's do that. Why I'm going to do that, just I want the perfect shape that looks exactly how I want it to be. Yep, exactly what I want. Next thing that I'm going to do, I'm going to add a, like this cut to show that this button is not perfect. It's already so a couple of bottles. So how to create this cut? Again, selecting this shape, go into the point mode, press P and add one point here, another here, another in between. And now I select this particular point, move to the left, remove the, um, this curveness, roundness, and now I have cut. Awesome. Next thing that I'm going to do, I'm going to select this shape, this wing, command X, select the outer layout because I want to put and this wing, this shape inside of the outer layout. So that's why command V here. But now ah, everything has changed. How to change it back, how to make it really look cool. For these things, I'm going to use another Figma Pro secret. You might be, if you are pro in Figma already, maybe you know that, about that. If not, go here in the top right corner, you will find absolute position and click there. Then you see this button. You see this, uh, not button, this shape uh, outside of our outer layout, but in terms of layers, it's still inside. So let's call it button. And for this wing, let's call it right, right wing of the button. This can be button, right wing. Okay, then what I'm going to do, I'm going to press Command D uh, shift H to reflect it, to mirror it horizontally and option A to move it to the left side. And then I'm going to move it to the right a little bit. One additional thing that I recommend you to always to check is that we have rounded numbers for our width and height and uh, X and Y position. As you can see, it's not rounded. And because of this just small, tiny 0.13, we can see the line in some cases. I don't want to see the line, like white line behind the bottom in some cases. So that's why I'm going to select the um, wings and I'm going just a little bit, move them. So now they have like 24 by 56 and here we have 24 by 56 which is, and sitting perfectly. Now we'll really have our button. Looks incredible. A couple of things that I want to do. I want to change the position of this cut. I want to move it to the top a little bit. So to show that this cut is a little bit different from the one that we have on the right side to make it not so perfect. Yep. Like that. Next thing that I'm going to do, I'm selecting the outer layout and adding two shadows to it. How to make this process a little bit easier. I select text, select the drop shadow, command C. Yes. In Figma, you can select fill color, stroke color, and all the effects. And then you select another elements and you can paste it, them there. So we select it. I um, select it now the auto layout. I press command V and now I have shadow already. 
but I'm going to make some changes here. So the Y position will be six and I'm going to duplicate the shadow, Command D, three, and I'll change this color to light version of brown. To make, to show that this button has some depth, but it also has shadow. Now it looks amazing. The only thing that we are missing right now is that reflection that looked really cool. So as you can see, this button looked cool, but this looks wow. So how are we gonna do that? We're gonna press R, add the rectangle here, and you see like how everything has changed and oh my God, it looks really, really bad. So what are we gonna do with that? Of course, we're gonna, first of all, while the rectangle is selected, we press absolute position. Now it's outside of our, like it's still inside of the auto layout but it's outside of our constraints and limitations. Next thing that I'm going to do, I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. The next thing is change the round corner to something like four, maybe five. Then go to point mode, move it a little bit outside here, a little bit outside here. Looks awesome. Next thing that I move text above this element Command Option Shift. Command Option Shift. Command Option Arrow Up. Now text is at the top. We change the color of it to linear, from white to white. And also we'll make it move it a little bit down. And also I change the opacity of it to something like 60. Now it looks perfect. The only problem that most likely this button is not responsive. How to check that if it's responsive or not. Just change the text and you will see. Home here, boom, nothing works. It's not responsive button. How to make it responsive? In this case, we'll be using the Figma tool called constraints. And for constraints here, we'll select the right side and we want the right wing to be attached to the right side. But at the same time, we want it to be stretched vertically, which means that for the constraints, we set constraint right and top and bottom. For the left wing, we'll be using left and top and bottom. And for the element, that reflection that is exactly in the middle, we'll be using left and right. And from top and bottom, we'll be using top and bottom. So now, when I start typing here, home is here, as you can see, the button goes bigger, even with two lines. Now I have two lines of text, but I still have everything like perfectly aligned, perfectly set up. Usually buttons don't have two lines, but just in case we covered this particular case as well, which is mm, perfect. Additional things, you know, as a perfectionist, I'm going to add the additional dot here to move it outside, additional dot here to move it outside to make it a little bit more roundish, like this. Perfect. And now when I type here start, for example, I can move this button here and it looks mwah, awesome. In addition to that, what I, we can also do, we can increase the patterns from left and right. So I just select here for our auto layout to 40, not to four, but 40. And now I have our button, but still, no matter what I will start taping, settings, settings, the next can be, for example, profile. And everything looks perfect, exactly what we wanted from to see from this button. Even if it will be like, go, perfect. Everything on its position. Next thing that you can just change the colors of this button and that's it. That's it. So now you know how to create these buttons, these incredible buttons using just one element. Let's take a look at the anatomy of this button particularly. So we have button, which is auto layout. And inside we have four elements. 
our text that we can change our right wing our left wing let's by the way change it to left wing and our reflection and to make it look really cool here we can type button reflection here we'll type button left wing and here we'll type button we'll just renaming these layers so next time when we'll preparing we'll be preparing this component for developers uh, we'll know exactly what's where but basically for developers we'll be using something different yeah we'll be using for android we'll be using nine patch so that's why we'll pre we'll uh prepare a little bit different component for ios we'll be we'll just select the button itself and cut it into three parts so it will be available for stretch and all the sides uh, when we're designing something for ios for example mobile uh, game ui now you know how to create all these things if you want to know more about Figma, if you want to learn Figma Pro Secrets, just go to here, alexanderhas.design slash Figma Pro Secrets. You will find everything there. I'll explain it. I'll, I'll explain everything there. Everything. How to create mockups, how to create backgrounds, how to create different mind blowing shapes and like things like even here. Let's take a look. Let's create something really fun, super fast and how to use it so we have we have a shape here that doesn't look like uh, cool so that's why i'm going to make some adjustments here to make it a bit like a little bit more interesting next thing that i'm going to do i'm going to make some adjustments to this particular element and then we create something interesting like shape behind it command g put it on the back and now we have additional element that looks just mind-blowing incredible i'll show you and i'll teach you all these things uh, in the figma pro secrets course link in bio or just type it in your browser and you will find it there today you learned how to create these buttons i hope that you learned a lot from today's lesson because we covered auto layout constraints gradients styles absolute position what else? Yeah, like how to copy and paste styles and also how to copy and paste particular elements, like shadows in this case. So go and try it, try it in your designs. And if you wanna learn yeah, more about Figma, now you know where to learn it. I'll show you how to create some game UI components like these crystals here, as you can see, they consist of, out of like simple shapes. I'll, I'll show you how to create a simple way. That's it from me, guys, today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you love it, just set like it. If you have any questions about this particular video, about next video, if you have ideas for the next videos, please share them in the comments below. I'll, I'll check all the comments and I'll see what I can do in the next video. Now go and practice, practice how to create these buttons. You will learn a lot. And then once you learned how to do that, start playing with all the different things like maybe colors, select colors and maybe start changing them to something else, to something different. Yeah, like that. Okay, then you just, I don't know, maybe select this color select this element it doesn't you can't paste it here no worries just select and paste go oh, looks cool right now let's change some shadows so we have drop shadows it's too much for us so i'm going to select this one change it to blue here into even darker version of this blue like that and now i'm going to do the same for the stroke perfect and for the drop shadow dark version of blue and now you have let's 
start. The color is a little bit different because we just selected it, so that's why. Select fill from here, select this element, command V, done, remove the one that we don't need. Let's start, play. How cool is that? Oh my God, it's just mind blowing. I'll show you how to update like multiple times, how to make it uh, button even cooler. Just never, never stop learning. And you will see that it's really, really fun. So it can be here in the top right corner. Let's go back to home. We have this button. Okay, now you know what to do. Go and practice. And if you want to learn more Figma Pro secrets, just go to alexanderhesdesign slash Figma Pro secrets. See you in the next video.